Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to best-selling novelist Michael Connolly, whose latest book is The Fifth Witness. The latest movie based on one of his books, The Lincoln Lawyer, starring Matthew McConaughey, is just out on DVD. Stick around. There's a good chance one of us has a decent lawyer story to tell. So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview. You know, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Stop by and check it out. There are more than 900 archived celebrity and pop culture interviews for your listening pleasure. The show is brought to you today by Audible. Audible is offering Mr. Media listeners a free audiobook download and a 14-day trial offer to give you a chance to check out their very cool service. I love listening to books on tape. If you've never tried it before, actors or sometimes the authors themselves read to you. It's great for the commute, the beach, or even unwinding before bed. You can choose a free audiobook from Audible's enormous library of Michael Connolly titles, including the Harry Bosch books, or Void Moon, or The Fifth Witness. Here's an excerpt from The Fifth Witness, written by Michael Conley and read by Peter Giles. I thought I had a workable case, even though Mrs. Pena would not be a sympathetic client. Most of my clients stop making payments to the bank after losing a job or experiencing a medical catastrophe. Mrs. Pena stopped when her three sons went to jail for selling drugs and their weekly financial support abruptly ended. Not a lot of goodwill to be had with that story. But the bank had played dirty. You could also download The Profiler, written by famed criminal profiler Pat Brown and yours truly, which Pat will read to you personally. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash radio. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash radio for your free audiobook. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of one. There were more people here, but then Matthew McConaughey decided to play the bongos in the nude, and, well, everyone else walked out in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. There are a few real name brands and legal mysteries that make book buyers line up and open their wallets. John Grisham, of course. Scott Turow had a piece of the action for many years. And then there's Michael Conley. He's got the lawyer thing sewn up with attorney Mickey Haller. He's also done a series of police fiction you may have heard of, featuring LAPD detective Harry Bosch. Conley's name on a book is Money in the Bank for his publisher, so the fact that he's good and fast means producing a new book every year, and two in 2011, makes everybody happy. I was happy when I discovered that Conley and I share a common link. We both studied fiction at the University of Florida under the tutelage of acclaimed novelist and character for life, Harry Cruz. Now, the fiction bug obviously stayed with Michael. Me, not so much, although I did have Harry on the show a while back to talk about his work. Now, Connolly is here in part to talk about the DVD release of his Mickey Haller novel, The Lincoln Lawyer. The movie stars Matthew McConaughey as the L.A. criminal defense attorney. You lied to me, Lewis. You didn't tell me you were paying Reggie Campo for sex. I don't go looking surprised. Could have easily told me that in Cecil's office. I didn't want my mother to find out. Cecil tells her everything. Oh, so you decide to keep from me the one thing that could have made this trial go away? Huh? Is that what Mitten said? No more trial? I said could have. If that had been the only lie you told me. What do you mean? Recognize that? It's a picture of your knife. The one you had on you when you went to Reggie's. The one the cops had. That wasn't the knife that was in the file. That's right. It wasn't. The file Frank got us is what we call a loaded deck. The cops used it to set us up to make us think they didn't have anything, when in fact they've got enough to put your golf-playing ass away for 20 years, big boy. You do exactly as I tell you from now on. You got it? Fellow Gator, Michael Conley, welcome to Mr. Media. Hey, thanks for having me on. My pleasure, my pleasure. Um, you know, i got to ask you, most writers I've talked with over the years tend to sign over the movie rights to their characters and walk away. They kind of wash their hands of whatever mischief Hollywood subsequently gets into adapting their stories to the screen. But you're actually promoting the Lincoln Lawyer DVD. What, what gives? 
Well, I think they did a fine job um, with the film. Um, and you know, you say most writers uh, like they throw their book over the border, over the border, and and, and wash their hands of it. Um, to to a great degree, that's what I do. Um, I, I want to keep writing my books, but in this particular project, what happened was when uh, Matthew McConaughey signed up, he wanted to get as far into the character of uh, Mick Holler as he could, and that included his research. His research took took him to me, and so I uh, long before they started filming the uh, movie, about a year before, um, he met with me and we established a kind of an email relationship, and he was thinking and preparing for this role all the way up you know, through that year. And that kind of brought me into the project. So normally I'm not involved. And so I was there, uh, uh, you know, four different times when they were filming it and everything I saw was good. And then when, uh, you know, I saw a rough cut of the film, I was very happy with it. So, you know, why not be out there trying to promote it? Um, you know, and you know, the fact is the, if this film is successful, it's going to bring readers to my books and that's what I want. So, um, it's kind of a no brainer when you have a film of this quality to, 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 you know, be part of the promotional effort. Did you feel at all that the movie got, uh, overlooked, uh, in theaters when it was in general release and that that's another reason to get involved in giving it a, a little hand now? Um, I don't think it was overlooked. It got very good reviews. Um, it had a really high, um, rating on, um, Rotten Tomatoes and, um, and it did pretty well. I mean, it's an R-rated film uh, with sort of complicated issues, um, um, very adult film, if you ask me. And so I think they're pretty happy with it, but they also know that this kind of story lends itself more to the audience that's going to wait for it on DVD. And, you know, in Hollywood, they have um, all surveys of everything. They, you know, so they, already, they knew um, from a couple surveys they took that, um, 60% of the people who wanted to see this film are going to wait for a DVD. Hmm. So I think, um, this, it, it did well in theaters, uh, but I think most of the people who are going to see it are going to see it this summer, um, now that the DVD's out. Yeah, I didn't, I, I admit it, I didn't see it in theaters, but I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it on DVD and it's got a, an amazing cast, uh, um, Brian Cranston is in it. Ryan Philippi, Marissa Tomei, John Leguizamo, Francis Fisher, uh, and William H Macy. Uh, it, it's not like they scrimped on this on the uh, casting in this movie. Yeah, it's very deep with very talented people. Um, you know, and then just starting with uh, Matthew's uh, performance, which was excellent. Um, I think they realized that you know there's a lot of um, legal drama on television. And if you're going to put a film out there, um, you got to try to make it distinctive from that. And on one level, um, they one of the ways they did this, I think, was to, was in, in casting it and and really getting some really fine film actors to take part. Some of them, you know, you know, like are not in it um, throughout the whole movie. You know, they have a. a, a Small part, but it's an important part, and and they do it so well. Um, it's pretty pretty cool, I think. It sounded like you were pretty uh, pleased by uh, Matthew McConaughey's uh, devotion to getting the character right. Were you were you equally pleased with what wound up on the screen from him? Yeah, I was, and you know, you write a book, and I mean, I I personally, the way I write is I like to build characters in my head, so. I don't like ascribe the people I'm writing about to uh, either movie stars or people in my life or real cops or real lawyers I know. I like building it fictionally, a visual fiction in my head. And um, when I've written more than one book about the character, each time that, that image gets um, cemented um, uh, harder in your imagination. And so, you know, by the time this he was filming... This, or by the time I heard that he was going to be um, Mickey Holler, I've already written about that character three times, and so I had a pretty solid image in my head, and Matthew McConaughey was not it. So um, <laughs> not only was I impressed by what he got on the screen, but he was able to overcome that preconceived idea in my head of who Mickey Holler looks like, I mean, what he looks like, who he is, what he sounds like. So Matthew, I think, brought a very distinctive um uh, character to my character, and 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 he really did it well. Um, you know the 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 eyes on the prize type of feel. The the guy looking at the next move. He's two moves ahead of us all the time. Um, that that's the character from the book, and that's also the character in the movie. 
did was there anything in uh, Matthew's portrayal of Mickey that will alter the way Mickey will be written in the future? Will you even even in subtle shades? Well, there was a uh, not necessarily about the character of Mickey Holler, but I did learn a lesson, and and so it, it's a basic lesson. And this would go all the way back to when you were sitting in Harry Cruz's class. <laughs> um, you know, there's no there's no throwaway characters. And when I was there filming, uh, watching the filming one day, Josh Lucas, who plays the prosecutor, um, and at one point in the film has to uh, drop charges against somebody. And I was there when they were filming that close up on him as he told the judge we're dropping charges. And, and he put so much character into that decision. You can tell it pains him because he felt he was letting a criminal go. And I realized that wasn't in the book. Uh, he had added a dimension that wasn't in the book. And, and it was a good lesson uh, for me to see that and feel a little bit embarrassed by it. Um, to, to remember, to, you know, once again, there's no throwaway characters. Even if your character only is, even if you're talking about someone who's only on a few pages of the book, you got to give them depth. You got to make them real emotions, all those things. And you can't skip over that stuff. And I, you know, um, watching that filming um, reminded me that I had in that incident. Is there uh, is there an, another Mickey Haller uh, adaptation in the works, and, and will if so, if will uh, McConaughey return? Um, well, I hope so. Um, I think that's going to be determined this summer. In fact, um, you know, they, there's a there's a hope that he'll want to do the character again. Um, he and like a, like I've already talked about here, he invested a lot of time preparing to do that character, um, and so hopefully he'll want to. Um, come back and do it again on one of the extras on the DVD. I, there's an interview where I interview him and the very, the very end, I slyly snuck in. Do you want to do this again? And he said, yeah, I'd like to put on these shoes again. Um, you know, Mickey Haller's shoes. Uh, so hopefully that will come to be. Well, he's certainly at a, an age and a stage in his career where, uh, being a regular character in a, in a series of movies probably would not hurt him. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, realistically, you know, I wonder about, and, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm not privy to what's going on, so this is just me just um, blabbering here, but um, I wonder, you know, he he really did that well, he, and he got some of the best um, critical reviews of his career, and so I don't know whether that works for you or against you. You know, if you've already done this film and you've captured this character and you've done it so well, do you risk something trying to do it again? Or is it, you know, a no-brainer? Yeah, you got to do it again because you already know this guy so well. Um, you know, I'm not an actor. I don't know what goes into that um, thought process. But um, I've been wondering about it lately, you know, as they've been talking about, do you want to do it again? Um, Michael, let's talk a little bit about writing while, you ha- while we have you here. I-, I mentioned, of course, that we... We both had spent time. I think you were two years ahead of me uh, with Harry Cruz at the University of Florida. What, do you ta- what did you take away from uh, working uh, or studying under a, a writer like that? You wound up you know, writing about crime uh, in, 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 in newspapers and then, of course, in fiction. Uh, it seems like Harry would be very proud of the path that you took. Um. I, I hope so. I mean, I, I, I know he knows about me. I didn't have, like, the kind of relationship with him that um, went on and on. Um, I've, I've met him one time since I've um, left college. and um, But, you know, I think he's aware of, of former students. I mean, one of the um, – there was a movie based on one of his books called The uh, Hawk is Dying. And on, on the extras, on the DVD extras, there's an interview with him. And um, I can see on the shelf behind him, he's interviewed in his office, I can see a couple of my books. So that was a very proud moment for me yeah, to know that my teachers got my books on his shelf. Um, yeah, I mean, he was very important to me because um, I, he was the first published uh, novelist I'd ever seen in person mm-hmm. or, or met. And he, as you know, he was, a, as you said, a full-time character. Um <laughs> And, and so, so he was impressive to me, uh, not only for what he espoused about writing, but in his um, offbeat or um, uh, lifestyle. You know, he's a larger-than-life character, and so that was very cool to me to for me to see. You know, to, to say I want to be a writer like that someday. Um, and so it's kind of weird that that would be his 
influential on me as anything he ever said in class, but that's that's the way it was. Yeah, he, he definitely left an impression, I think, on anyone he met, whether you were a student or not. I, I would run into him on campus uh, after taking his class. I mean, you know, once the, that whole semester would be gone, and, and he'd look at me. He couldn't remember my name, but he could quote a paragraph from something that I wrote that he really liked. And I always thought, how do you do that? But, you know, uh, interesting guy. Um, yeah. Now, you, uh, uh, you did newspaper work for many years, doing uh, a crime for the LA Times. Is that a, does that become kind of a natural um, stepping stone to doing what you do now? Was that, was that good training for you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I kind of went into it backwards. I wanted to do the books. I wanted to write crime fiction. I wanted to write crime novels. And I went into journalism as a means to that end, so uh, almost like research. So I would be, get have an entree into the world I wanted to write about in fiction. So I always had that um, motive kind of in my back pocket. And so, yeah, the, it was a marvelous training ground because the whole time I was doing it, I, I was hoping to eventually... Um, you know, take a lot of what I was seeing and the characters I knew and the dedication I saw and the kind of um, unsung nobility in um, detectives doing a good job. All that stuff um, I was aware of um, from the beginning because I was also aware that I was hoping to someday have a career as a novelist. Um, Not only that, but working for newspapers um, gave me a great but I think it was a really great working ethic, work ethic, uh, writing ethic, you know, of writing every day. One of the things of, you know, I think I took three classes where Harry Cruz was the teacher. Um, you know, of all those classes, I just remember how he would hammer home that if you're going to be a writer, you got to write every day, even if it's only for 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the, the training in newspapers where you have to write every day, there's no such thing as writer's block in newspapers business. Um, you have to write every day. Um, I kind of took Cruz's lesson and hammered it home for me, and it gave me that. And so... Um, you know, I get a lot of people are you kind of at the top when you introduce me. I get this uh, reputation as being prolific. Um, I just write at a pace that suits me, but I do write every day. And that's because of um, my experience in the newspaper business. Uh, last question for you. Um, you live in Florida. You have a residence here, uh, which, of course, is never short on good and bizarre crime stories, including the just completed uh, Casey Anthony uh, mur- murder trial. So I have two questions, and we'll wrap up. Could a novelist have written a crazier path to justice than hers? And what would Mickey Haller uh, think of uh, Casey Anthony's de- defense attorneys, Jose Baez and uh, Cheney Mason? Well, I mean, I think the, the problem uh, uh, that novelists um, face is that they're held to a greater degree of believability <laughs> than real life. And so if you wrote a novel that was like the Casey Anthony case, I think it might be rejected by um, publishers um, uh, just because it didn't, it doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel uh, believable. And, you know, you, that's just one example. I mean, and, you know, and I, I have, I used to fill my books with anecdotes from my days as a reporter, real things I know that happen. And more than once, my editor has come back and said, you know, this thing just doesn't feel real. I think you should edit that out. And it would be based on something that really happened, um, you know, like a, a case where um, the cops knock on the door and someone says, come in. So they come in and find drugs and gun. And it turned out it was a parrot that said, come in. Uh, I put that in the book. My editor said, you got to take that out. Well, I wrote a newspaper story about that. It really happened. So you have uh, to be more believable than real life. And so I think that would be an issue in trying to construct a novel about uh, a case like the Casey Anthony. And as far as Mickey Holler and um, what his view of the defense attorneys, I think he would be um, admirable. Um, you know, um, Mickey, you know, Mickey uh, is a guy who works the angles, but at the end of the day, he's very idealistic and he believes in the system that you're entitled to um, the very best defense possible. So since she got the not guilty verdict, she must have gotten the very best defense possible. And so I think Mickey would... Um, would admire that. Interesting. Well, uh, folks, listen, you can find uh, Michael Conley's The Lincoln Lawyer on DVD in great stores everywhere or order it online right now at a great price at mrmedia.com. And look for his latest book, The Fifth Witness, or his next, The Drop, which returns Harry Bosch, in all the same places. 
And if you're in the Hamptons this August or in Rio de Janeiro in September, check Michael's website, michaelconnolly.com, for details of his personal appearances in those places. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for joining us on Mr. Media today. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. For more original interviews with America's top storytellers, surf over to our main website, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. If you've enjoyed today's show, subscribe for free to Mr. Media via email, RSS, iTunes, or our new Android app. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many parts of Hollywood. Show your support of Mr. Media by supporting our sponsors, including Audible. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash radio. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash radio for your free audiobook. If you've got an idea for a guest, a comment on today's show, or would like to advertise on Mr. Media, email me directly at bob at mrmedia.com. You can also call our 24-hour listener line, 1-727-498-4711. Some messages may be used in an upcoming show, and unless you live next door to Mr. Media, there may be a toll charge. You can also follow Mr. Media on Facebook, Twitter, or our new YouTube video channel. Thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with Mr. Media. Thanks for listening. Hey, this is comedian Mark Marin, and I love Mr. Media Radio, even though he didn't let me go on as long as some other guests. Hey, did you know that you can listen to the latest Mr. Media on your phone with the Stitcher app? Stitcher is smart radio for your smartphone. Mr. Media is on demand and on the go with Stitcher. Download Stitcher for your phone today. Get the free download at Stitcher.com. That's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R.com.